Today, we will be diving deep into one of the most famous stories in the Philippines, a story of greed, pursuit, and the intertwining story of a locksmith and a dictator. This is the story of Yamashita's gold. I'm Aaron. And I'm Jess. And and, welcome to and, the fifth episode. Yes, of the Rip fifth from episode of Rip from the Textbooks. And uh, this has been a story that has been circulating a lot since the uh, for time in Moriam since the seventies. Yeah, and yeah. it has it's come to a you know, uh, ever since like uh, the Marxists has come into public, uh, have has come back into public politics and consciousness. This uh, this tale has uh, has resurfaced stronger than ever before. Yeah, it's 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 probably one of I, I wouldn't say it was probably one of the fa- most famous, but it's definitely well known over here. Yeah, uh, it's also subject to a lot of conspiracy theories, uh, oh, yeah. which at some point I don't know, maybe we'll we'll go through them. Yeah, you like know. Philippine conspiracy theory iceberg. List I, I something. hope I hope there is one. That's for sure, because I I really and wanted was, I really want to yeah. explore that. <laughs> there's like iceberg maybe there videos is. Hopefully there or uh, iceberg theory videos, uh, iceberg videos in general. Ice. Sorry, uh, are becoming much popular on YouTube. These days, even mm-hmm. making careers, which is which is amazing. So hey, yeah, maybe know. the yeah. Philippines has has one, or hell, we'll we'll even make one if we have to. Oh. <laughs> we'll even yeah, make one if we have to. So yeah. So what do you think about this? Uh, you know, what do you think about this uh, whole Yamashita's goal uh, story? Well, it's definitely. Uh... Uh, first off, I never really knew more much about it before, like reading and researching, yes. right? Because you know, well, like reading into it, it's probably no joke. It's probably one of my favorite ones I had to research and like write about. Because it. like, it's very interesting, especially the history it had yeah. before, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really gets it's my, those. Uh, you favorite. know, really gets those uh, journalist uh, juices going, huh? <laughs> yeah, they made me go like, "Oh, this is cool." <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of scared when when I brought this up. You're gonna be like, uh, you know that meme that that about that conspiracy guy meme. <laughs> yeah, you know where where he where he has this where he's like he hasn't slept in days, and it's like there's a bunch of connections all over the board. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that. I'll saw put it that, up in like, post. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. It's like he's pointing to like a board, and it's like so. Disheveled. I swear, Aaron, they're all connected. <laughs> Yamashita's gold was, <laughs> Yamashita's oh. gold was owned by the lizards all along. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was there all along. Man, why aren't you believing me? Yamashita didn't actually find the treasure. It was the <laughs> lizards. Wait, Yamashita was the treasure. Look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. So before we begin, I'm going to preface that there will be a lot of uh, Japanese names and probably Japanese terms. So uh, I'm sorry if I ever butcher them. So uh, yeah, we're not Japanese. <laughs> yes, we're not Japanese. We're we're only just beeps. like the I. Beep shit podcast. Beep shit podcast. Plugging our other shit. Anyway, so let's begin. It was September of 1944. The tides of the Pacific Theater had slowly turned against the army of Imperial Japan. General Tomoyuki Yamashita is rescued from his forced exile to China after the fall of Prime Minister Hideki Tojo and his cabinet. And on October 10 of that year, took command of the 14 Area Army and defended Manila against the slowly advancing Allied forces, who would land in the province of Leyte nearly 10 days later. He later would retreat to the Sierra Madre mountain range in northern Luzon before the Battle of Manila ensued, and later would surrender to the Allied forces on September 2, 1945. 
several weeks after Japan surrendered. He was later tried and executed on February 23, 1946, for his failure to stop the atrocities committed by his troops under his command. This legal precedent would later be known as the Yamashita Standard, where a commander-in-chief can be held responsible for the atrocities of troops under his command, even if he was unaware, approved, or even had the means to stop it. But that's not only the legacy left behind by General Yamashita. The other has been subject of much interest and skepticism, even after years since the Second World War had ended. It was said that during the campaign by the Imperial Japan on China and Southeast Asia, they had amassed a massive amount of stolen wealth. One of the biggest propagators of this rumor were Sterling Seagrave and his wife Peggy, who wrote and published two books on the subject. They allege that mass looting of gold and other valuables occurred as a joint effort by the Yakuza and Emperor Hirohito, who wanted to use the stolen valuables as funds for the war, even assigning his brother, Yasuhito Chichibu, to head a secret organization called the Golden Lily for the operation. Yamashita himself was said to be assigned in constructing the Golden Lily Tunnels, a vast network of underground tunnels dug into the Philippine mountains where the stolen wealth could be stored away and kept, slowly smuggled out after the war ended. After completion, under the order of Prince Chuniyoshi Takeda, all the gold and wealth was stored away and even the men who knew about it were said to be executed, with only Prince Takeda and Yamashita learning of its true location. The Seagraves and many others believe that after the war, American military intelligence operatives found the location of the gold and it was later used to fund many operations during the Cold War. Though many skeptics have since turned down the allegations, and many have used it to dispute the claims of the treasure's existence. This did not deter treasure hunters in the slightest, who desperately sought out the treasure in hope to claim it as their own. But the price of the treasure would later be paid dearly, as is the case of Rogelio Rojas. It was 1961 when Rogelio Rojas, a former soldier and locksmith, met a farmer in Baguio who claimed that his father was a member of the Japanese Imperial Army. This man would map out the location to Yamashita's treasure. Rojas would later meet another man who claimed to be Yamashita's interpreter, who told him that he himself visited the supposed site and saw boxes filled with gold and silver. This spurred Rojas into finding the treasure himself. It was not until 1970 that Rojas would be granted a permit from a judge to excavate the area. This judge is a relative of then-president Ferdinand Marcos named Pio Marcos. With a team of excavators with him, Rojas began digging at the site, working tirelessly for 24 hours a day within a span of seven months. It wasn't until 1971 that they discovered a network of underground tunnels and an enclosed chamber. Inside, they had found bayonets, samurai swords, radios, and skeletons dressed in Japanese military uniforms. But what was also found in the chamber was a three-foot-tall golden Buddha statue that weighed a ton and crates filled with golden bullions. He said that it took 10 men and a series of ropes and logs to get the statue out of the tunnel and into his home in Baguio, where he would later store it in his closet. Ross did not attempt to hide his historic discovery, 
posing with a golden Buddha statue for a newspaper and showing it off to prospective buyers, who estimated that it was 22 carats of pure gold. He would later discover that the head was detachable and inside was several handfuls of uncut diamonds. He was living the high life. That was until the night of April 5, 1971. At 2.30 a.m., a group of military men dressed in uniform searched the property with a warrant signed by Judge Pio Marcos. After beating Rojas's brother and terrorizing his family, the men left and took with them the Golden Buddha statue, the diamonds, 17 gold bars, samurai swords, his wife's coin collection, and his children's piggy bank. He later went to the press and local police with his story, but ultimately hiding for several weeks. Before emerging once more, when news of the Golden Buddha was turned to the local court on April 29. Men claiming to be representatives of Marcus's mother offered Rojas 3 million pesos if he agreed that this was indeed his Buddha. But Rojas refused after seeing the Buddha had a different color and no detachable head. He was arrested a month later and tortured for several weeks into signing an affidavit claiming that the search of his house was done in a peaceful manner and to provide the locations of the treasure. He was subjected to shock torture, burned with cigarettes, and beaten to unconsciousness with rubber mallets before finally signing the affidavit but refusing to tell them the location of the treasure. Rojas would later escape by lockpicking a window lock and escaping, but ultimately captured again in July of 1972, subjected to more harsh torture before being freed in November of 1974. It wasn't until Marcos was deposed and fled to Hawaii in 1986 was he able to retaliate and sued Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos in Honolulu, Hawaii in March of 1988 for theft and human rights abuses. He signed the treasure's rights to the Golden Buddha Company, established for that very purpose in exchange for company stock. During the trial, an American mining expert testified to having Ferdinand Marcos show him the Golden Buddha with the removable head which match with the Golden Buddha that Rojas posed with in 1971. Many other witnesses testified to seeing the Golden Buddha in Marcus's home and that they claimed it was taken from someone and replaced with a brass stand-in. And in 1996, the Golden Buddha Company won the case and was to be paid 22 billion pesos in damages by the Marcuses. The court ultimately concluded that Rojas had found the treasure. Whether or not it was the famed Yamashita's treasure was not verified, but the final judgment was summarized as the Yamashita treasure was found by Rojas and stolen from Rojas by Marcus's men. But it would be a victory Rogelio Rojas would never experience. As he would die, in 1993, at the age of 50, to tuberculosis. Though many suspected it to be foul play, his statement in court prior to his death was later used as evidence that won them the case. While many have accepted that Rojas had found the Amashita's treasure, many still argue the authenticity of its existence to begin with. A history professor questioning it being shipped to the Philippines to begin with as China or Taiwan were a more viable option as to not have it fall in American hands. But whether or not Yamashita's elusive treasure existed or was just a rumor that grew to mythical status, it seems to have a legacy 
that is as valuable as the treasure it hides. This is an amazing tale, and I'm glad it's like a very, uh, it's a tale. It, it started as a tale of of victory, right? <laughs> it's yeah, a tale of yeah. victory, uh, having found a golden Buddha. <laughs> It's like, this is this is like the, this is like it the seems too good to be true to be too. honest. Like wow, a yeah. golden Buddha weighing yeah. a ton, and inside made, made it with a detachable head, gold. mind you. Wow, a detachable yeah. head, <laughs> and inside it was this uncut diamonds. It's like a tr- it's like something in something straight out of Indiana Jones. Yeah, and, and it sucks what happened to Riley Rojas. Yeah, it became a time. story of injustice real quick. But what can you expect during that era? It's, it's, Right, yeah. it's it's this is like the that... second time we have featured the Marcuses. This is the second time. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, we try not to be political in this channel, but uh, it, lots of a wild, the lots of wild stories happened during the Marcus era. The it's, Marcus, it's a it's yeah. a known fact. The seventies to eight to early eighties Philippines was uh, it's a wild was wild a time. time. Yeah. But, you and know, this is just part yeah. of them. This is just part it's of just those one of wild, many stories. wild stories. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And but, uh, yeah. Anyways. you know, th- I I think it you know, it didn't really help that you know he was he was not very he was not hiding it. And oh yeah, he right. he's and well the judge knew about the treasure so you know. He sold them greed, out. Yeah, that, you know, I, like greed, greed takes hold of a man real strong, I guess. True. I, I generally feel bad for Rojas in yeah, that story. Yeah, he didn't deserve like, that, honestly. You know, because... if, if... Oh, sorry. You were saying? Yeah, because, like, I mean, he found it. Like, it yeah, it. seven I mean, months of his life. 24 hours a day. Yeah, and he found it by chance. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, he randomly met a farmer. Now that just happens. That's uh, a five star gacha luck right there. Yeah, that that's a great pull. That's an SSS pair pull. It's like hey, you're lucky. And, you Are know. we ever gonna find this? It's like just when doubt <laughs> was about to set in, like fully. One last <laughs> man, one like, last ascended. swing of that pickaxe, bam <laughs> revealed the entire yeah. tunnel. But yeah, it's a it, it it ends very tragically, which is which is very unfortunate. Yeah, he never got they, to they enjoy his really... riches because of you know the slow justice system in this country. But at the very but, least, yeah. he so, won. You know, he, he won. He, he got to. I don't know if he got the twenty two billion, but yeah, they but won. They won. But yeah, I'm a few as cold. Like, jeez, were you? How much of the story were you aware of before? Like getting into this before you're like reading uh, how much of it did you actually know mostly it was a bunch of conspiracy theories mm. you know uh how basically you know uh prob you know mostly it's it's mostly in the fringes of the internet you know how basically mm. you know marcos used the go marcos owned the you know owned the yamashita's treasure and he yeah. used it to, you know, make the Philippines better and all that shit. Make Philippines the best country <laughs> it, it, it ever became before, you know, before those dang protesters came in and ousted him. Before the evil protesters, you know, but came in and said, at, "At this point, let's let's not, you know, let's not go into conspiracy theory so. land." You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it was stolen. <laughs> it was stolen, <laughs> it and was stolen. there's court. There's probably court documents to prove that that's in the public yeah it was. true true but yeah 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 it was gold i wasn't i i wasn't very that well versed in it like it was one of those stories like i heard early on like oh that sounds interesting like possibly of a massive wealth just hiding somewhere it is uh it, it's it's still i think to this day people still think that it hasn't been found and it could be true. Maybe the Golden Buddha wasn't really the Yamashita's treasure. Maybe it's just part of the treasure. Or, you know, it was a different, like, treasure entirely. And, you know, it's not... It might be that, but, like, you know, it's still out there. 
but yeah, I enjoyed the story to be honest, because it's it's something that I never expected. I thought it was just going to be an elusive treasure that was never found, and people just wanted to prove that it exists, and people tried but failed. Yeah. But no, people, yeah. uh, the Golden Buddha is actually linked to this. I thought it was like a separate thing. Mm. But turns out, hey, you know, they, it was linked to the Yamashita's treasure uh, lore, which is the entire, which is cool. You know, it's 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 status right now. It's it's practically it's about practically synonymous with like Philippine urban legends. Yeah, you know, it's that is that famous. Yeah, it's a damn shame we yeah. never had our own uh, take in. Uh, you know, we had never we never had our own take in. Uh, mm. You know, we never had our own Indiana Jones that took on this mm. this myth. You know, I'm pretty sure. You, you think that maybe you know, just like you think that our mm-hmm. you know local networks would be on that shit, you know. Yeah, but you know, aside from a few TV specials, I think that's they didn't make a show mm-hmm. out of it, which is a shame, a, a waste, really. Like this is this maybe this like... of the treasure stuff. It's definitely something you could make a movie out of, probably. Yeah, maybe there's like remember those like old ripoff movies from the nineties, where like for some reason. The Philippines started ripping off popular yeah. movies and uh, I mean there's the also yeah. the elusive uh Batman rip off movies. Oh yeah. Those rip-off which are now movies. lost but, media like, by the way. Yeah. But like, you know, I maybe there's like a lost media Indiana Jones rip off movie about Oh yeah. Gold or turns something. out we just never but, knew because be cool. it was burned in a warehouse somewhere. It's, it's lost media. Yeah. It's lost media. Which is very interesting. I never realized like Philippines or like our entertainment culture actually has pretty popular DC media, which was surprising to learn. Yeah, so it's a, uh, you know, it was a wild west uh, of cinema. That is for sure. Yeah, that is for sure. because we could do whatever we want. Yeah. Because I think at the time we could just get away with it, right? Because no yeah, one's gonna, like... no one's gonna pursue you for that. But now it's like everyone's like a fucking hawk. But back then, it's like, I want to make a Batman movie. I want to make a Batman trilogy, and no one's going to stop me. Yeah, there's like Mario vs. Goku movie, which is on YouTube, by the way. I think even you linked it to me one time. Uh, But anyway, uh, enough of this this tangent. So uh, any last thoughts uh, regarding this this topic? Well, let's end it like with the question like, how about you? Do you personally believe of uh, like Yamashita's treasure or gold? In, in your, While your I have state? to kind of agree with that historian, like you could have <laughs> hid it in China or somewhere else, mm. but uh, you know, it's nice to think that it could be somewhere. It could be hidden somewhere in the mountains, mm. and all it takes is one brave treasure hunter. You know. One brave treasure bastard. hunter to, to you know, to mine the shit out of the you know to mine the shit out of the ground and hopefully mm. come across those lost tunnels because I don't re- personally I don't care about the treasure, but the history the the bayonets the rifles oh, yeah, the World War Two rifles that are in there. Imagine like that's a his that's like an entire piece of history like right there and you know could easily. It, it sucks. It'll, uh, it'll be gone. Anyway, is it? Hopefully, we find it. I, I, personally, for me, yeah, there's there's an entire history. I I think those are like the best parts. If you ever find lost these lost hidden tunnels used by the Japanese back then, because it's like a time capsule. Well, anyway, that ends our latest episode of Rip from the Textbooks. Thank you for watching, and please check out our other podcast, The Weeb Shit Podcast, where we chill out and talk about whatever comes to mind. Mostly anime, manga, video games, and everything in between. Again, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.